Hello and welcome to Mars. I'm Mick and we're playing Stationeers. Today we look around the base we see that we have completed our weather sealing. We're good. Today is the day as you probably guessed from the title of the video we're going to pressurize our workshop here. But before we go into the big the big job of pressurizing this one we're going to go back to the start and have a look at some of the early game systems you may have tried to use to pressurize your base. Uh, once again, none of them are wrong, they're just something you do, you make do with what you got. So, let's go have a look, shall we? And we go back in time. Now, early on in the game, you've probably built yourself a little starter base, something like this. Just a single room with a basic airlock. You've mounted some active vents. One vents out, one vents in. Sad old starter solar panel sitting there by itself. You've mounted your console and your, and your pressure sensor and not really knowing what to do with them. But you make do. It works. So one of the easiest ways we can pressurize the base is being on Mars here is we have a carbon dioxide atmosphere. So if you want to get it into the base, it can be just a case of using your airlock. You just close the inner door, switch on your airlock, and it's now sucking all the air from, from what will be your airlock into the room. If we have a look through, you should be able to see the air particles moving around. That'll happen. It'll be slow, but it'll get there. And it will pressurize your base with atmosphere. As I say on Mars, it's not too bad because it's CO2, but if you are playing on stationers on the hardest difficulty, uh, you'll want to breathe all atmosphere or you will suffocate every time you try and eat your potatoes. Um, but for growing plants, that's fine. As I say, it takes a while. And we can close that door up, open it up. And we've managed to get to 4 kilopascals. So it does take some time. Now I'll turn it away. Of course, is just to open your, bring in your tank of death. It tries, to, it tries to kill you on the way in, that's just normal. We can turn it up and just let the oxygen out of there. But you are limited by how many times you can do that, so probably not ideal to use up all your oxygen that way. You'll have accidents when you try and remove something from the wall. Oh, I want to remove that vent. Oops. And there goes all your oxygen. So to pressurize your base, you can, as I say, just suck in air from outside using the active vent, but you've got to manage that yourself. A very simple way to automate it is to use pressure, pressure regulators. The pressure regulators we've got will draw in gas from one side and it will put it out the other side until it reaches the preset pressure, uh, such as something like this. So outside, comes through a pressure regulator, got the pressure regulator set to 50 kilopascals. I can just switch it on. It will continue to draw in atmosphere until it reaches 50 kilopascals in here. And that's it. I walk away and it'll just sit there and chug away until it's done. Once it reaches the desired pressure, it just stops pumping. Now once the pressure reaches 50 kilopascals in here, it won't blow any more in. But as gases can come from other sources or as the air, air in here heats up it will expand and the pressure will increase. Um, so once again you can try letting letting it out everywhere or you can once again use another pressure regulator. This time we can use a back pressure regulator. We just use a scroll wheel we can do that. So we hit a back pressure regulator you can put it there going the other way. Our back pressure regulator will let out all the pressure until it reaches the desired pressure on the input side. So if we connect that up, so if we connect it up like that, we can set our pressure regulator, say 52 kilopascals, and switch it on. Now, this one will run until we get 50 kilopascals on this side. That one will do nothing if there's only if there's less than 52 kilopascals. So if the pressure in here then increases for some reason, that one will let it back out 
and back out to the outside. So these two will just sit here and they will manage the pressure. It will be happy with anything between 50 and 52 kilopascals or whatever you set them to be. And walk away and forget. That's it. Your pressure is regulated. Now that's handy if you're happy with the atmosphere that's on the outside. Not everybody's going to want to be happy breathing carbon dioxide on Mars, so there's other things we can do. So we can use a portable portable tank stand like that. So now you just lock your tank down and you're done. So now when you, you switch these on, it will be pushing oxygen into the room from your oxygen tank. When it overpressurizes, it'll push it back into your oxygen tank. So you can see our pressure up here is rising slowly, but we're getting there. Pressure regulators only work slowly, but you don't, shouldn't, shouldn't have need for large pressure changes. All right. So we've used our tank, we've locked it down. What happens if you want to refill your tank? Not a problem. We can still do that with one of them. Put on another connection point. We're done. I can still refill my oxygen tank from the oxygen supply. Not a problem. Yes, you may get a bit of CO2 gets gets sucked back into the tank, but you have CO2 filters in your suit, so that won't won't bother you. Now if we look at our atmospheric mix, pressure is quite happily rising. We've got O2. Once we reach 50 megapascals with that level of oxygen there, we should be able to breathe and eat our potatoes in comfort. Now, to pressurise a larger space like this one here, you can use the same techniques. So just take a, take a bit longer to get the pressure in here. It's a larger space. But what happens if you want to get a very specific gas mix? Uh, just for the sake of being a nerd, I'd like to have you know, a specific gas mix with a nitrogen-oxygen mix. Uh, so 50% nitrogen, 45% oxygen, 2% carbon dioxide. That leaves you about 3% there to play with as to whatever happens to be there. Doesn't really matter, those should be trace gases. So to do that, it's a little bit more involved. Now from previous episodes here, we've collected the gas we wanted to do it. So we've got our carbon dioxide, our nitrogen, our oxygen, big tanks of them, plenty to go in there. So now we've just got to mix them in the right quantities. So first thing we'll need to do is pipe them into our habitat, which we've just done here. Three pipes all going in separately into there. So back inside. Now one way of mixing the gases is using gas mixers. As it says on the label, the uh, question is just now how you mix them together. Now, I have the oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide coming in. I want primarily oxygen and nitrogen. So I'll put one there and then mix in the CO2 after that. Now, so we want it to be 55, I'll say about 55, 45 there. It gets pretty close to what we want. And then we probably only want about 2% to be mixed in from that one. Not a problem. Now this will mix your gas and then just blow the mixed gas into the room. That'll work fine. Our room will overpressure, so we always need a way to get rid of it. I shall use the same as we had in the other, other section there. Use a pressure regulator, a back pressure regulator. We'll set it at 52 kilopascals and we'll just let it drain excess atmosphere as we need it. So that will release any overpressure. This will just blow air in at one end at the required mix. Any of the things that's in here will eventually be just displaced and taken out the other end. So that is a way of doing it. It is not my way of doing it. Because I I have a better way of doing it. Well, I think it's a better way. Each to their own. 
I shall do it using volume pumps and a bit of automation. So we have some code to look after it all for us. Now this is called Atmospheric Mix Controller. You can just grab it off the workshop. It just goes, does go on for a bit lot. A lot of it is very repetitive, so you can grab it and have a look through it yourself. I won't go through all the code here. We'll just give a basic of how it works. At the start, there is some defined uh, constants that are set. So we set our minimum nitrogen at 50%. Our minimum oxygen at 45, our minimum CO2 at 2%, our minimum pressure will be 50 kilopascals, maximum will be 70. So it does have a shut off on this if, if the back pressure regulator can't keep up with it. It also does have temperature controls on that, but we won't be using them today. So I confirm that, export it, and off we go. Now, the way the code works is it works off a gas sensor and it will sense how much gas how much of each of the gases is there in the room at the time and if any of them are lacking it will just add the one that's missing so this one is the most efficient one if you've already got an atmosphere in the room this is the most efficient way of doing it because if you're in a somewhere that already has a heap of oxygen like Europa uh, you don't want to be blasting a heap more oxygen into the room when you don't need it so this one does just what it's missing. So for that we need three volume pumps and a sensor. And there we have it, our three volume pumps. We will need our IC housing of course and a gas sensor. Let's not put it too close to everything else. So yeah why not? There will be as good as any. Now, to wire him up. And done. Wiring is all in. All wired up. Pressure sensor. And we're still using our overflow meter. We've got that set to 52 kilopascals. We want our room to 50. So, any overflow we get rid of through there. Of course, as always, hook it up with the transformer. Don't need a lot of power. 2000 watts should be heaps. So, it's a matter of hooking everything up, we flick it on and off. That way, all the names appear beside everything is what we want. So, that is our sensor. This is our gas sensor. That wants our nitrogen pump. There it is. Wants our oxygen pump. That wants our CO2 pump. That's our cooler and heater, which we're not hooking up. Now we switch it on, you see immediately the oxygen and nitrogen pumps are switched on, which is probably because being Mars we've already got enough carbon dioxide in the room as it is, and it is pressurising very quickly. And here we are a little bit later. We see that the gas levels have stabilised to what we specified in the program, 45 oxygen, 50 nitrogen, and at least 2% CO2. Because the room is full of CO2 to start with, the remaining 3% is pretty much all also CO2. But we're happy with that. We can breathe it. I've got my face visor open. I'm quite happy. Eventually the sun coming in through the windows here will overheat the base and we'll have to implement some sort of cooling system. But at the moment on 6.3 degrees, our first priority might be some heating. But we might as well do both at the same time. But that's something we'll do another day. So, till next time, happy building, I can strip off now, yee, wee, wee, ah, what the hell, no one's looking, ha <laughs> ha, nudie run, woohoo, till next time, happy building, see ya, Whew, that's a relief. Three weeks in a space with nothing but baked potatoes. This ain't gonna be pretty. Oh shit, I'm still recording. <laughs>